Hi creatives, today we are back designing another brand from scratch. Creating a brand can feel quite intimidating because there are just so many moving parts. So I hope that taking you through my branding process in this video is going to help you feel more confident. We will also be looking at how to come up with a company name, which is something I haven't covered here before, so I'm really excited about that. The brand today is a futuristic train company that is both super fast, comfortable and more sustainable. The audience will be commuters looking to have a relaxing trip to and from work and we also want to make sure that we accommodate for things like workstations, a bar car and comfortable seats to have a nap while you travel. All this fully branded of course. For this project we need to come up with the name, logo designs and a full visual identity including items like a menu for the bar car and marketing for the company as well. First off, let's jump into some research and have a look at what other brands are doing in the similar space. I always just start off by searching for the most direct search term that I can think of to get a good overview. And in this case, I think that would be sustainable train company. We can see that there are quite a lot of similar looking websites with a lot of white and the trains themselves usually have like a blue or a green color accent. Since we're looking for a mix of futuristic and high comfort, I want to look into both the high speed trains in Japan called Shinkansen and the more luxury retreat trains in places like Scotland for example. I think we can learn a bit from both of these sides and combine that into something new and exciting. The Shinkansen trains look pretty typical for what I associate with passenger everyday trains and we see that there are so many of these trains that have this lighting that is quite harsh and all the way down the sides of the aisles. I'm not a train engineer or an interior designer, so I don't know what logistically or financially works best, but since I am a brand designer who is going to suggest different changes for the overall aesthetic of the brand, we can still think about things that would make the brand feel a little bit more aligned with those values that we were thinking about. One thing that I think could be really good would be to have more of these spot recess lighting and softer, more kind of natural tones that would feel a little bit less techy and more sustainable and warm and welcoming. This could be for elements like tray tables and wall treatments, for example. And I really like the Japandi look. I think it could be a good source of inspiration for that mix between high-end and futuristic day-to-day -day travel. I think it's also really important to make sure that we have lots of accessible signage and that all of the designs and elements that we're using in the train work for people with different abilities. In these commuter trains you will have such a mix of people who are commuting day to day when are working in the corporate world or families traveling with kids or students for example. So we want to make sure that all of those different people can feel comfortable. I think taking the time to consider all these little things in the brand will help make the brand a lot stronger and it will help show your value as a creative person for the project. Next up I want to look at branding inspiration for transportation and trains in general. There's honestly not a ton for some reason, maybe after this video you you can create your own and tag me in a post on Instagram and I can share it to my stories so we can see what you would create for a transportation brand. A lot of the designs feel either very modern or very retro inspired. I come across this packaging of a train and it made me think of a paper artist that I love called Margaret Schinkel and I think we might be able to make something really cool digitally but giving the impression of paper art. So let me show you what I mean. So let's say for example that we want the train itself to feel very calm, very minimalist and kind of using this Japandi style. But we want the surrounding, the location where you're going and the trip itself to feel very bright and colorful and positive. We could use the style of paper art to create something where we're playing with shadows and textures to actually create that paper texture feel. This will create a sense of traveling in peace to exciting and new places. We will come back to the illustration in the visual language portion of this video, but first we need to come up with the name for the company. Most of the time I collaborate with a copywriter for naming projects, but if we want to do it ourselves, we always start with word association. I write down as many words as I can that are related to the feelings that I want the company to convey, like comfortable, relaxing, and inclusive. I then go to a digital thesaurus and I look for synonyms. This is just a way to think of words that I might not have thought about before and it can also lead into some interesting routes that I can start exploring. 
Naming is a massive project in itself, and we also need to consider the legal aspect of naming. You need to make sure that no one has set up a trademark for the name that you're choosing and suggesting. We need to make sure it works across different countries so that it's something that doesn't mean something rude, for example, in a different country. And we also need to make sure it's easy to spell so that when people go and actually search for it on Google, for example, or on social media, it's going to be easy for them to remember and to spell. Compound words are a very common strategy because they essentially give us double the space to convey a feeling. If you ask ChatGPT, for example, this is also the type of name that they tend to suggest a lot. You can also have fully made up names or names that are quite common, but they're spelled in quite a different way. What you need to make sure is that even if you spell something differently, if it still sounds like a name that's trademarked, that could still be an issue, so you still need to look into that. If you're in the UK, this site called Name Availability Checker lets you search the name that you would like to use and see if it's already registered by someone else. This site is the most basic version and your country most likely has their own version as well. Although using sites like these are not a replacement for using a trademark lawyer, it can be a helpful first step for weeding out options that are already taken. After trying out lots of different options, I settled on the name Quested. I really like that it feels like it has a sense of adventure, it's quite short, and it also is not something that is registered by another company. I actually love that the word starts with the letter Q because I feel like there is something we can really play around with in there visually. My very first step is to start sketching out rough ideas. I like to sketch in Procreate because it can so easily make copies and tweaks, but it feels like less pressure compared to working in Adobe Illustrator for me personally. I think the idea of the queue being a tunnel with the tail of the queue being the train could be a really cool idea for an icon. After the sketching, this is my favorite design, so now I want to go into Adobe Illustrator and find a font that will work well for the logo. I also want to work on the logo icon. For fonts, I like to look at foundries because they have fonts that can really give the brand a unique style. This is one of my favorite foundries, so I'll check out some of the options here. Most foundries have an option to download a trial version, which is great when you don't know if your client will actually love the font yet. If they do, you can go ahead and buy the actual license, and if they don't, you haven't wasted any money. This is the font that I'm really excited to use, and I think it works really well all together as a logo. Now that we've designed the logo, we want to jump into colors and typography before I move on to illustration. In terms of colors, I want them to reflect the values, so I'm thinking a light blue that feels airy but still warm, maybe some greens and yellows or oranges that creates a nice contrast and reminds us of nature and comfort. A good rule when you're picking colors is to start with the 60-30-10 rule. This means that you have three colors, where one makes up 60%, the second one 30%, and the third one works as an accent with about 10%. For most brands, having at least one warm and one cool color is also a good idea to create contrast and make sure that the color complement each other nicely. Once you have your color selection, you can see if you actually need to add any more or if you are fine with the ones that you have established. But how do you actually know how many different colors you need? For general designs like logo design, social media and website design, I think it's good to stick to a very limited color palette. But when we're going into areas like illustration, for example, we might want to expand the palette a little bit. My favorite way to do this is to stick to the 60, 30, 10 colors, but then add different shades. For example, one lighter and one darker version for each color. This plus a white and a black will give you 11 colors to work with. And that often feels like a nice balance. For the typography, I want the title to feel bold and unique and the body text to feel friendly and easy to read. Since we have such a lovely font for the logo, I want to keep this for the title font and then I decided to go with a real classic for the body copy. If you want tips on how to choose type for your branding projects, you can go sign up for our newsletter and you will get access to our type guide right away as you sign up. Now onto my favorite part, which is illustration. I have collected some examples of the paper art feeling that I want to create and some other illustrations that I think could work really well together. I imagine that we want an illustration that could work as a billboard or a website banner. So we want to feature the train, a bit of scenery and make sure that we leave some space for the text somewhere on the graphic. The first step is to start working on the overall layout. This is a super rough sketch just to make sure that we understand where everything should go. Once we're happy with the sketch, I move on to creating a cleaner sketch that has more detail. But even at this stage, nothing has to be perfect. I like to create different elements like the train and the scenery on different layers. 
That way I'm able to resize and play around with things without having to redo any of the sections. Now that we're happy with the sketches, I move on to color. And I always like to set up the color palette first. This way I know that I have the full palette ready and I don't have to think about color as I'm illustrating. To make sure that it will all look nice together, I create a color rough before we do the final artwork. This is basically just taking a big brush and coloring underneath my sketch as if I was using a coloring book, but much more rough. It helps me make sure that the subject, in this case the train, stands out nicely and that the final art piece would look really balanced. Lastly, I create the actual illustration by first creating the color blocks and then adding in shading. If I feel like the design could use some more details, like adding highlights or smaller elements, this is the time where I focus on that. Now let's take some of these graphics and use them as assets for the brand overall. So to recap, we have now done the brand research, come up with a company name, we have designed a logo, come up with colors and fonts, and we have done a custom illustration and assets. Now it's time to move on to all the practical bits and actually apply the brand to things like their marketing and the menus and signs that we talked about at the very beginning. And here is the final quested brand. I really hope you found this helpful. If you want to watch more videos about the branding process overall and watch me create more brands from scratch, make sure that you check out this playlist here on the screen. Thank you so much for watching. Good luck with your projects and see you next time.